Hi everyone, it's Kieran, and on today's video we're going to be doing some decoupaging. I think if you choose the right design, you can really elevate a piece, and I actually find it really therapeutic. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing, and also in the comments box below, be sure to let me know what type of design you would use to decoupage these pieces, and also whether on the bucket you preferred it in the orange or the natural colours. So on Pinterest I've seen a design that I've really liked for quite some time where they use a black base and then orange sort of decoupage elements on top. So first I have got this box uh, that I just picked up in a job lot. It cost about £5, not very much, and I could probably not sell it for very much more than that. But because I'm going to decoupage it, I can add a lot more. I'm going to give this a coat of matte black enamel based paint, and you can use any black paint that you have just as a base colour. Now whilst that dries, I'm going to go and print out my artwork, and I've included the artwork down in the description box below as a PDF if you'd like to use it. It uses images from the Graphics Fairy, so big thanks to them, and I have organised it in several shapes, and also I've included it in the original colours and also in the orange tones that I'm using for this piece. With these, you want to make sure that you print them out on a laser jet printer rather than an inkjet printer, because an inkjet printer can run when you get it wet. Don't worry about getting any expensive or thick paper, just go for the cheapest and thinnest. So I like to really roughly cut them out, and then I like to go around and neaten them off. And it's a good idea to get quite a few of different styles all laid out in categories before you start decoupaging because that allows you to see what you've got and also come up with your patterns a lot easier. Then it's a case of starting to glue them on. So I'm going to be using my PVA glue uh, from Poundland. This is just a st standard glue. You can use Mod Podge or anything like that. I also like to keep a moist microfiber cloth on hand so that you can wipe off your fingers. Then I'll just apply some PVA glue on the back with a nice clean brush and I just use the edges of the brush just to push just push on the corners of the paper and that just gives me a section to pull it up. Now one thing I always do is I always paste on a slick surface so something like a plastic bag is really good for that. It allows you to keep your glue active for longer, it doesn't dry out if you were using paper and it also gives you a really nice clean peel when you take off your piece. It's a case of building up your design and honestly, you know, there is no rhyme or reason to this. For me, what I like to do is fill as much of the space as I possibly can and just make sure that there's very few big, big gaps that look unfilled. Now where I change my mind, it's really easy to scrape that off. Just use your microfiber cloth to wet that area and then peel it off. And I think I have ADHD because I can't just focus on one surface, so I dot around the whole box until it's finished. Once it's finished, let it dry completely and pop it to one side, and in the meantime I'm going to start working on this bucket. So again, I've painted the bucket in matte black paint, and I really liked the little wooden handle on this piece more than anything else. And again, it's a case of working the pattern onto the piece, and so what I tend to do is pick a central point, and then I will create a design and I will work from that outwards. And I tend to work all the way around towards the back, and then I will just fill up any space in the back. Now with the bucket I was really going to go with those original colours but I decided I really liked those orange tones so I decided to switch back to those and just replace the ones in which I'd already applied. Now it is surprising how many pieces of paper you do get through and on this I've probably used eight sheets of paper in total. Once they're fully dry then it's time to apply a varnish. So I find a gloss water-based varnish works the best as well. I have used an oil-based varnish with this once and I actually found that that discoloured the paper. Now with some water-based varnishes they will go on milky uh, and then they will dry but if you leave too much varnish on that milky area will dry white. So you need to experiment a little bit with the varnish that you use, which is why I like this Wilco's one. And I just apply lots of thin coats. Because it's water-based, it dries within about 15 to 20 minutes. So I just, throughout the day, will come back, same brush, and I will just apply lots of coats. And once I've applied about four or five coats, that's a really good finish. It also helps level off any of the edges of all of the pieces of paper that you've applied and it gives it more of a, a sheen across the board. But this is a really common technique that's been used way back when, back to Chinese antiques. 
and this is what they came out like. And whilst I'm showing you these clips, I'm really trying to grow my YouTube channel, so I'd really appreciate it if you would consider subscribing. Also, be sure to let me know down in the comments box below whether you like this effect, whether you like these decoupage designs, and any type of content that you would like me to create. 